Hello and welcome to an update on some lighting gear. We don't do lights that often, but I thought today would be a good example of some of the weird things that I've actually been doing and stuff that I've been getting to work. Well, I might have to split this into two videos, but we'll see how we go. Um, I've been a user of Magic Q, Campus Magic Q, for a long time. And originally with a hardware control surface. So this thing, which was a Maxi wing. So basically you run the software on your PC or a Mac. Uh, this thing connects to the outside world. It's got four universes of DMX. You just connect it to your computer and it sort of works. And I like it because it's big and chunky, but it's not too big. And it's, you know, it's rather nice. And of course it's got nice big chunky buttons. I like chunky buttons because I'm a bit useless with the fine detail. But anyway, that's what this is all about. But I've been running it off ordinary PCs and over the last few years a MacBook. Um, but that's always a bit of a fudge because, you know, you want the MacBook for something else. You, probably, you know, in my particular case it's running QLab or something. So that's it. So I tried another computer and that was great until sort of, you know, it became a bit unreliable. So I thought I'd have to try and solve the problem. Um, in the theatre, we've got a hardware Magic Q system. Um, and that's just a, a one piece unit and it works absolutely great. But for all the other stuff I use, I still want to use Magic Q. So this, which originally was in theatre, it's been now retired here in the studio. But I thought I'd see if I could generate a really small suitable computer with a touch screen and this thing here is what I ended up with so what I've got here is a very small touch screen which I got from China as I buy loads of gear from China so it's a small Chinese touch screen uh, this particular one I think might have come from Amazon I'll double check um, so it's really slim and on the back I've got one of those small one piece micro windows computers it's what this one's running windows 11 it's got loads of inputs on usb it's got loads of outputs on hdmi and a network socket and that's pretty much it but it's attached to the back of the monitor so what i've got here is magic q in one box touch screen and then i can use the other control surface and this is really really good now there's there's no real snags at all it, it works absolutely fine and with that control surface i've got four dmx outputs in the theater we're running artnet so in the lighting box at the back none nothing at all is plugged into the dmx outputs of the desk it all goes down a piece of cat5 squirts out at the stage end and at the stage end we've got a fairly expensive eight port unit that converts artnet into dmx and from there it goes to the lights and i wanted to see if i could do the same thing here but cheaper and i think i found the products so what i've got here now um, are two different cheap chinese artnet nodes and that's what we're going to talk about um, because you can't really get excited over a little 19 inch rack mount box that just has sockets on the back. It's very difficult to think, well, go, wow, that's great. But these things can be really, really expensive. But these were under 200 pounds each. So that's quite cheap for an Artnet node. So I figured what I'd do, because I had one little project that I needed to do with some light here, but it had a time scale on the end. The client I was doing it for needed it by a certain date. And I wanted to do it with the new lighting system so what I did I ordered two uh, different suppliers and I figured that what I'd do is I'll just do the project on the first one that arrived and uh, it did um, this one was quite late I mean it got hung up in customs um, the story about how it got hung up in customs is a strange one because basically uh, you know the sort of hairy windshields that you stick on microphones you know the long zeppelin style covers that you see people on the end of a boom with a hairy cover 
well, those hairy covers are sort of rather nicknamed dead cats. And uh, when it came into the country, the supplier had written on the customs declaration, contents, dead cat. Yeah, so that and this got held up in customs for quite a while while they undid all the boxes and discovered that in actuality it wasn't a dead cat. It was a bit of fur fabric and not real fabric, of course, just nylon. But there we go. So this one came very late. So I figure what I'll do today is show you some of the differences. In actual fact, price wise, they're within 10 pounds of each other and they both do the job perfectly well. There's a few small differences which could mean you'd want to order one or the other. It's not that one is best, it's just that one will do a few extra things that are a bit odd if you want to. So what have we got? Well, the front panel on these things is pretty identical. This particular one is very simple. Um, power, link, action and DMX. That's its four indicator LEDs. Power is pretty obvious. Turn it on and the little power light comes on, yeah? Okay. Um, link tells you it's connected to your network. Action means there is data there. And DMX comes on when the data is valid ArtNet data. So that's the only indication you've got. The display does actually usefully say link down if the um, network cable is pulled out or becomes damaged. So if you lose your link from front to back, you actually get a warning come up in the display. It says link down. Um, other than that, it's a menu system. There's a menu select, menu enter, and an up down. And the menu systems on both of them are extremely similar. With this one, you select the things, you adjust the parameters, and then you hold down that button there for about three seconds, and it sticks it into its memory, and it's done. That's, that's the only things you can do in it. There's nothing else. Um, and frankly, I don't think it needs nothing else, does it? So on the back, what have we got? Well, a pile of sockets. So power con for power in. So that's a locking connector. That's great. And then realistically, there are eight output three pin XLRs. I know they're not fives, but most of the Chinese gear is standardized on DMX on three pin. Um, so eight ports on the output and an Ethercon capable socket for the network. So you can plug an ordinary network cable in with the clip, but if you've got um, one that's actually got the sort of XLR style surround, it will go in there and lock. Um, so that's pretty much it. In there, so ArtNet squirts in there, DMX will then squirt out of there. And in real terms, that's it. You do get an option on both these units to actually change the output ports onto different universes. So there's no real reason why you can't swap them around. Um, as it comes, it's sort of one in, one out, two in, two out, three in, three out. It, it's like that. But if you wanted to change that for whatever reason, it's possible to do it. Um, so that's the first unit. The alternative is extremely similar. Um, the only real difference is this section here, where you actually have LEDs for data that's going out of the eight ports. So if you're not using ports four, five and six, they won't be illuminated. So normally all eight will be on if they're actually not disabled. Um, you've also got a little, little LED here, which tells you an ArtNet is present and two LEDs that are labeled DMXA and DMXB. Now, the idea behind that is quite clever. On the back of here, it's got some extra sockets. So you've still got your power con coming in here. Um, then we've actually got two DMX inputs. And you can route those two DMX inputs to any or all of the DMX outputs. So you don't have to use it just as an ArtNet controller. Um, you, you can run this standalone and just use it as a DMX splitter, but a two channel one, which is quite handy. Um, there's, in the menu setting, there's an extra bit on here that allows you to select each of these outputs to either be ArtNet or DMXA or DMXB. So it's a sort of two in one product. 
I can't really see me ever using that, but I mean, it is possible that if you wanted to use it, you could just press a few buttons and use it as a, as a splitter. The only other thing that this one's got that's a little bit unusual is it's got Artner in and also an out. So you could daisy chain it to the next unit. The only thing to remember about these things is that if you're going from a computer or, or indeed a desk straight into this, it won't work because the ArtNet signal on the network cable needs to be reversed. Now, if you use a hub, well, then the reversing is done inside the hub. But if you want to use it just as one cable, you just need to either have a reversing cable or a little reversing adapter, and you can get those for about five quid, so they're not very expensive. Stick that in the port there, and then a single cable to your computer or your hardware desk will work. And although I use Magic Q, I guess these are going to be just as good for any other computerised lighting controller. The one thing that's a bit weird is that Magic Q runs uh, in demo mode, and if you plug in one of their little cheap dongles, you can get one universe out on DMX, and they do a couple of versions. One that sort of is cheap and times out after a couple of hours or so, or whatever it is, and the other version is permanently on. And if you use a hardware controller, then it unlocks everything, and you know you can do everything and have multiple un universes. Well, when I connected it to my office computer to test this, I discovered that Magic Q was quite happy driving both of these units without the dongle plugged in. So in actual fact, the Magic Q is a free download and will talk to one of these things and work. Now, I don't know whether that's just the, the latest version of the software that I've got. It might be. I really don't know. I've never tried it before. But I just thought it was rather nice that um, Camsys are allowing people to use ArtNet nodes that work with their free software. I thought that's pretty nice. And for some people, I can see it getting them out of trouble. Um, the touch screen on this thing uh, works pretty well. The only snag is I have got, as I said, big chunky fingers. So trying to double tap on a little tiny field on the screen is pretty tricky. Um, you could plug a mouse in. I haven't bothered because um, it does work. You just got to be a bit more accurate when you sort of do screen tapping. But... Um, I'll put the info on that screen up as well because it wasn't expensive so realistically it's a very inexpensive PC a very inexpensive touch screen um, and one of these Chinese cheap ArtNet nodes and that's going to give you eight ports of DMX for not very much money at all now in here it's absolutely perfect for doing what I'm doing in the theater we've still got you know the hardware standalone Magic Q, which is um, not cheap, but you know it's okay, and it's one box, no messing about with cables. This is probably a halfway house. Realistically, all with this thing I have to do is connect a network cable between that and that, and it works. I don't need to use that hardware control if I don't want to, um, and for what I'm doing in the studio here, I've got no real need to press faders like that. Everything else I can do on that screen. So this is a really cheap way of doing things. And as far as I can see, there is no difference at all in the technical performance between these two units. They're interchangeable. One's just got a few more bells and whistles uh, that maybe I'll use, I don't know. But I can't really see the point in paying a lot of money for the more expensive ones. Now, fair enough, a lot of those have got a web address type way of programming. so. If they're both connected, you can actually do all the IP addressing remotely. These things are a bit of a faff to set up, but that's no fault of the unit. It's just you've got to be OK with things like IP addresses and things like that. So the system I used on this one was just to look at what uh, the IP network addressing is on the computer. Um, copy that number into Magic Q. So in actual, you copy the IP address, that's the subnet mask um, gateway copy those from the computer into Magic Q, and then with the unit, you just add in the IP address, the subnet mask as you, that you did on the other two into this. 
and when you get it in and you type it in right as I did wrongly quite a few times when I was doing it uh, all of a sudden the little light comes on DMX squirts out the back it really is that simple copying the address from the computer to magic Q and copying the address from the computer into the node and that's pretty much it it works um, it is a bit fiddly because obviously you've got up down and enter buttons so it's prod, 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 prod. but you get there in the end and it's not complicated there are quite a few other parameters that appear in the screens uh, I didn't need to adjust any of those from the default settings uh, just the IP and then the two I think in my case it was two five five zero 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 and it worked that's that's all I had to do Magic Q actually helps you out quite a lot now so that when you're trying to set some of the settings uh, very often I found that instead of having to actually go and type in the IP address um, it came up on the screen with the sort of thing you know you want to use this one um, yeah I did and it worked so that's pretty much what it is if you've got around about well if you buy it from China don't forget I think they're advertised at about 160 170 pounds that means that they're possibly going to sting you 20% VAT when it arrives and if it comes by somebody like DHL or UPS they'll want around about 12 pounds for the privilege of them paying the VAT on your behalf so you've got to add on 20% and possibly 12 and if you're very lucky it will just get delivered and you won't have to do that but it's a gamble with the products that I get from China um, most of mine um, don't have that added now uh, mainly because I've got a, an Ali, AliExpress business account and so the system for me is slightly different um, I very rarely have to do that um, DHL and UPS occasionally will suddenly slap on those charges um, but I do know that when some of my friends have ordered from AliExpress and they're an ordinary sort of an ordinary English buyer then it's far more common to get that 20% added on sometimes even added onto the bill at checkout um, which can be a bit annoying but what's that mean um, it's 160 170 pounds or it's about 219 220 possibly but that's much better than the, the next cheapest which is probably what 400 quid so these are not bad and worth a go anyway I'll see you on the next video let's see what we'll talk about then I hope this wasn't too confusing because we've dotted about all over the place but you'll have to pick the bones out of it but I don't think either of these are a Nats whisker different in, in terms of what they do for me I certainly don't mind um, I'm going to put one of them up on eBay I think someone else can have the benefit of it uh, I only need the one um, I think I'm probably going to keep the one with the XLR inputs I suppose at some point I might need a DMX splitter and having this would enable me to do that I don't know see you soon look after yourselves take care